Hi, and thanks for joining us. If you missed our last video, we woke up on a gorgeous ranch near Somoto Canyon in Nicaragua. Rested and ready to go, we made our way through Nicaragua and stayed near the Costa Rican border. When we finally got to the Costa Rican border, we were denied entry because of some missing paperwork. In this video, we decide to see the situation as a blessing and make our way to the colonial city of Granada, one of the finest in Central America. Hi, this is Dory, and I'm Mena. We travel with our lovely dog Fiona to discover the most beautiful locations, and our goal is to share with you what it's like to live as a nomad. So thanks for following, and welcome to our channel. six-hour border run. Yes, we survived. We spent a beautiful night at the Blue Morpho Eco Lodge. Sorry for the rattling. I left some dishes in the dish tray. Now we're on our way to Granada. There's a, there's a campground and RV park over there. Uh, it's run by an American and it uh, looks like it's pretty central. So that's awesome. Kind of like what we had in Antigua. I'm hoping to have a similar experience because we had a lot of fun in Antigua. At the moment, we're on a really nice road and the Highway 1, if you stay on the Pan American Highway, it's really, really, really well paved in good condition. You have lots of services around like shops, gas stations, so not to worry about the roads if you're following the Pan American Trail, which is the NIC1 or the CA1 that goes straight through Nicaragua to Costa Rica. It's not too bad. It's cobblestone, but it's actually a really good quality cobblestone. And the area that we're coming from where we stayed at Blue Morpho, it's super secure. There's a military checkpoint before you access this area because there's an illegal border crossing that people use so they're trying to kind of crack down on that and they're trying to make sure that everyone is coming in here for legitimate reasons and not to use that you know secret border crossing because what happens is people just get paid off and and let people through so we do feel super safe here though because I mean you have to go through so many hoops to get into this neighborhood and yeah we had a great stay we got to play with the baby calf this morning. Look who came to visit us this morning. This little beauty. Mama's not around so I could say hi. Hi. Oh, there she goes. What a cutie. She was playing with Fee earlier. I wish I got it on tape. And then Mama came by, wasn't impressed, and then I had to uh, hightail it out of there. But this little, this little calf is very curious. Very curious. Oh, and Mama showed how not impressed she was. <laughs> she left that gift there for us. <laughs> Lovely. Fee got to sniff the calf and they were playing a little bit. That was pretty fun. And now on to Granada. Vamos a bailar. 
We have such a sweet setup here in Granada. Let me tell you, this place is beautiful. Look at this beautiful colonial porch. It goes the length of part of the wall. And uh, this is our setup right here where, where we've been working. The van is right there. And so I could pass stuff to Dory through that window. We had another camper right over here, but they left. It was another camper van too. And this is my lovely husband in his hot weather uniform. Yeah, hair. <laughs> yeah, time for a haircut today, huh? Yeah, I was thinking about that. If I should go look for a barber. Uh, yeah, we'll do it at supper time, I think. Sorry, well, I have time now. That's what I was thinking. So, let's show you the rest of this. So this spot here, I think, is like a little communal area. I'm not too sure. Anyway, this whole, this whole terrace here, this porch, is a communal area. I'll show you the bathroom real quick. The only thing I don't like about it is that there's no lock on the door. There's actually toilet paper and a toilet seat. Not bad. And the other thing I don't like about it is that there's no shower curtain, so the floor gets really, really wet. Otherwise, it's great. And then we have this whole rear yard that's not only enclosed and gated, it's huge. And uh, Fee can come back here, do her business, and, you know, wander around if she wants. There are two dogs here. They're quite friendly. Well, one of them is friendly, the other one is a little bit territorial, but the territorial one uh, is fine with some time. Hi. Hi, buddy. This guy's my favorite here. Um, the other one is a male pit bull, kind of big. He was fine with Fee because she's a female, but I'm thinking it might be a little bit more territorial if it was a male dog. But I mean, look at this place. <laughs> this is like a dream to work from. So we've been doing our best to pump out some videos for you guys because I know we're super behind. I think we're about two months behind right now. When we're in traveling mode, that tends to happen because, uh, you know, this whole Wi-Fi situation, I'm not gonna make excuses. Well, here he comes. He's pretending to be a guard dog, but he's actually pretty, pretty much a scaredy cat. So here we are. And, just look at this colonial doorway. It's just fantastic. With the ironwork. Oh my god. And that tile. Oh, look at this tile. This is the kind of tile dreams are made of. Look at that ironwork. Just incredible. And yes, it's tall enough for a bed. So, hey Garu. Hey buddy. This guy's probably about a hundred pounds. That's where we're working right now in Granada. So we've been working. We haven't explored that much, but we're going to venture out the next couple of days. And so far, like this is paradise. We just love working from here. We have the best setup ever. Even Fee's enjoying it. Back to work. Now, it's time to go explore this beautiful city. The Granada market is very interesting. Either you like it or you don't. Let me tell you, it's very colorful, has a strong smell, and insofar as markets go, it's really the only show in town. So everything is concentrated there. This market is very much for local not tourists. If you need chicken, pork, fish for the night's dinner, that is the place.
that little bit that we walked through Sunday when we were here, it was bananas. We were completely overwhelmed. It was sensory overload. There's a car behind you. It was just nuts. So I'm glad we had a chance to come back today on a day that it wasn't so busy. And we had a crazy meal on top of it. It was really, really good. So because Granada is accessible from the ocean through Lake Nicaragua via river, it was invaded by pirates three times. Not once, not twice, three times. And Granada is the oldest city in Central America. We really wanted to check out the historical center because it's a beautiful colonial town square. So let's go check it out. The Cathedral of Granada on the east side of the Cathedral Plaza was built in 1583, but has been destroyed and rebuilt many times since. The most recent version, built in 1915, has four chapels and a dozen stained glass panels. Nicaragua's oldest town, it's also the most interesting. It's no wonder many travelers use the city as a base, spending at least a day walking along in the cobblestone roads from church to church in the city center, then venturing out into the courtside for trips to nearby attractions. Granada has an estimated population of 105,000 people. It also had a thriving indigenous population. In 1524, the city was renamed Granada by Francisco Hernández de Cordoba. Granada is located along the coast of Lake Nicaragua, the world's 20th largest lake. So straight ahead of us, we have the Malacón of Granada. That's a mango tree. And if you see there, there's tons, so many. Oh my God. Granada is a very warm city all year round with an average temperature of 25 Celsius, or 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Good afternoon. Usually it's good morning, but today is good afternoon. Mostly it has been good afternoon because during the day, can't go out, it's too hot. So it's about five o'clock. We're gonna go get dinner and explore a little bit the town again. So yesterday, I think it was about $12 altogether. Including tip. Floating tip, which is not so bad, six dollars each. And we're gonna go try out a different twelve dollars and sixty cents. Twelve dollars and sixty cents. And now we're gonna go try a different spot. So normally Granada is very cheap. I mean I paid my for my haircut. It was like five bucks with a shave, haircut, and twelve bananas. So normally is very affordable, even food. I'm pretty sure we could find some food at the market. But yeah, again, every time we walk by there, my appetite just goes straight down. So we are eating in a more touristy spots. So it comes with a price, but again, it's still affordable at like 10, $15 all together, right? So, oh Canada, terra de nos Granada's economy continues to grow as it is becoming an hub for tourism and is widely known for preserving some of the finest colonial era architecture in the country. What I love is a lot of these buildings very unique you know and a lot of them they have that yard that garden right in the middle Renata's restaurants have received international recognition by newspapers like the New York Times. 
In the recent years, the city of Granada's evolving culinary scene mixes local and international flavors, as well as supporting farm-to-table sustainability of local growers and producers. That's the results. Two minutes later. Hey, good morning, guys. So today is Friday, 6.46 in the morning. And let me tell you, it's busy, but it's not hot. So we're going early in the morning because obviously the sun is not super hot. It's walkable, it's good for feet. And we're gonna try to go see a few spots. Let's get this day going. Iglesia de la Merced is the most beautiful church in the city. This landmark was built in 1534. Most come here for the spectacular views from the bell tower, especially picturesque at sunset. Originally completed in 1539, it was leveled by pirates in 1655 and rebuilt with its current Baroque facade between 1781 and 1783. Damaged again by William Walker's forces in 1854, it was again restored with the current elaborate interior in 1862. Today, Catholics come here to see an important image of Fatima. Granada's economy continues to grow in big part because it is fast becoming a tourist attraction for its colonial architectures, as well as its ecological beauty and now as a food destination. So now we're getting to Parque Central and Cathedral of Granada. We've been here a few days already in a row. So normally where we come and get food, the touristy place. And right now, we're about to get into the nice street. What I mean by nice is the touristy street to get all the sh restaurants and bars and shops and everything's in the street. And it's really clean, let me tell you. It's, it's pretty clean. It's definitely a different vibe during the day at nighttime. Nighttime is a lot of people. There's the lights on. Oh, uh, it's a little bit cooler. But it's just a different vibe. You got the music going on from every single store. And our tour of Granada is done. Long walk, how long did it take us today? Uh, I think we left around 7, 7.30, it's nine. Yeah. So now it's, you know, walking, it's already starting to get hot and it's nine o'clock. So we're glad we did it in the morning. We knew where to go. Cause I mean, for the last four days, we've just been walking around. So it was nice to do a quick tour, daylight and yeah. then at night. And uh, yeah. what's your thoughts about Granada? Well, it's not my favorite city, I'll be honest, because it's a little dirty and a little stinky, but it is a beautiful historical town in Nicaragua. So if you're coming specifically to Nicaragua, you have to see Granada. I mean, yeah. the colonial architecture is just incredible. So just keep in mind, it's a very, very poor country and um, it's reflected a little bit in, in the market and in the, uh, in the garbage that's left on the streets. On the flip side, you can get fruits and veggies dirt cheap and you can eat really well for not that much money. And again, uh, you're getting a beautiful colonial city on a budget because it does not cost a lot to stay here. Yeah, I agree with man. It's not a city that I would move into, definitely not. But definitely visit if I have a, like, you know, first time I would visit. Would I come back? I don't think so, it's done. Uh, the marketplace was a, a little rough, you know, the smells and uh, the poverty and how dirty it is. So it was a little rough, but I think that's Granada. You that's know? part of the charm of Granada. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the touristic stuff there, the central, it's much cleaner. What a huge contrast, right? You got all these business, you have all these tourists there. 
and uh, well, it's also a little bit more pricey but again you know there's a reason why the malacone too was very clean it was really nicely landscaped it was quite beautiful yeah so how long you take you think it would take to visit granada i would say if you're making this your base that could be interesting to go visit uh, laguna apoyo and lake and Volcan Masaya and Ometepe Island. You could spend a week here and make this your base, but the city itself, I'm thinking maybe one or two days. Yeah, two days tops. Yeah. Keep in mind, I mean, we had a hard time finding a laundromat over here. Uh, we did find one, but it was like $15. Mm -hmm. A little bit on the pricey side. Uh, but I think two days, it's good enough to visit yeah. everything you need to do and keep going. Yeah, so that's for Granada, so. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give us a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one.